So welcome everyone. <laughs> this is a yoga Pilates fusion as normal. <clears throat> Whatever that means. <laughs> so we're going to start lying down. I am going to start with a rolled up blanket um, down the length of my spine to give me just that little bit of a chest opener. If you want to join me in that, you can. If you would prefer to do uh, <laughs> something else, either just lie down or use another prop like a block or something instead, you can certainly do that. So as always, I use a relatively thin blanket so that the shape underneath my back is not too intense. If it's a really thick blanket for me, uh, <laughs> it can just cause more kind of discomfort rather than a nice sensation. So I go for something a little bit smaller, but everybody's different and some people will like a little bit higher support and some less. So choose for yourself. And then once you're lying down, you get to decide where does that support belong? Am I gonna put it lower or higher oh, down the legs? Oh, I'm gonna go for right about like near the bottom of my ribs first and see how that feels. And I might uh, move it a little lower, a little higher. I think that feels pretty good. So I can leave my feet resting on the floor. That's one option. You can put the feet together, of course. And then you might want some extra support if your knees don't touch the ground. That's the second option. The third, extended legs. This one for me creates a little bit more lift in the rib cage. I think it's just my hip flexors pull a little bit more and that's not uncomfortable for me but if it were uncomfortable for you you might choose the other options or put some support under your knees oh and then once you've gotten yourself settled our task <laughs> always with every beginning of every class is to do two things one is to tune into the breath and get some movement going in the breath, in the ribs, and the navel, sides of the waist, just everything we can move, get, get flowing and moving and expanding with a little bit big, bigger breath. And then the second thing is to let go of the rest of the stuff we've got on our agenda for the day. Let go of all the things that have happened in the past and try to just be present for the next slightly less than an hour. <laughs> That's ultimately the task we're about, whether it's Pilates or yoga. One of the primary <laughs> notions is that we're going to spend our time concentrating and being present for what we're doing. And if our mind is somewhere else, that's not easy to do. So let yourself get centered in this time and place, in this moment. feels like there's kind of tension that develops around the breath, use each exhale as an opportunity to really relax every muscle. Just let that exhale really softly come out. Greet the exhale with a lot of kindness and a real gentleness so you're not forcing the exhale at all. Three more breaths in this space. Now 
Now the first thing I'm going to do to come out of this is I'm just going to put my feet on the floor, right? draw my legs up, and then roll to the side and slide the blanket out. And then coming back onto my back, I'm just going to make sure I've got enough room that I can reach my arms all the way overhead without running into anything. It's possible that you're not going to want to run, reach your arms all the way up, <laughs> but just make sure that whatever range of motion you intend to use is pretty clear of objects. What's up? So I'm just letting this whole thing settle for a second because there still feels like there's a little bit of an impression left behind by the blanket. But while I'm on working on that, I've got my feet resting on the floor in a constructive rest position. So that is uh, probably the easiest on the spine. It's gonna not it's gonna not tug at all on the spine generally. Um, or you could have your legs out straight. For me, that tugs a little bit and creates a little bit of a um, movement pattern restriction so this is the best for me so choose for yourself we're gonna do a couple of little movements for our shoulders and these are um, not specifically yoga per se or not specifically uh, Pilates but they are um, a nice movement pattern and there are some yoga like <laughs> shapes to them you'll think that the inkling of how things became yoga shapes is here so uh hopefully you'll be up to that <laughs> in any case um i think they're nice for releasing tension out of the shoulders and if you are like me and that's where you carry all your stress then uh <laughs> this might be nice so we're going to take the arms just in whatever their neutral position would be like if you were standing up the arms kind of hanging that's about where they should land and you're going to reach down uh, towards your heels. So I'm depressing my shoulder blade actively and reaching through my arms. We're going to bring the arms at a really simple range of motion, just up and overhead as far as they'll go. So if there's any pain here, you can stop just before that pain occurs. And then we're going to come all the way back. Now the whole length of the range of motion, I'm reaching through my arms. So there's little change in my shoulders as I go along. And I'm just going to come up and overhead, reaching the whole way, and then come back to neutral, reaching the whole way. So we'll do that twice more. Now, there are some rotator cuff injuries where right around here, you'll start to feel some challenges or some pain. And that should be taken to a medical professional of some sort <laughs> to help you out with because that's very specific. All right, so we're going to come all the way back last time here. All right, so then just pause for a moment, sort of let your shoulders unwind and then notice the impact. Is there anything that feels tender or sore? Does one side feel like you want to work with it a little more or a little bit before the other side? We're going to do both, but you can just kind of pick. Is there a side that feels like it wants some attention? And for me, my right shoulder blade doesn't sit quite as even on the ground as my left, so I'm going to start with that one. So you're going to bring your arms up so that they basically leg on your back. They're pointing at the ceiling, and then you're gonna reach across and grab hold of whatever arm you wanna start with. So I'm gonna grab my right upper arm. Now, some people can do like, they might like the arm up a little closer to the nose or you might want the arm a little closer to your navel. I go straight across the chest. So bringing that arm across my chest, holding onto it with my left hand, I'm gonna pull my shoulder blade back into my back. Now, the yoga pose that this kind of um, generates off of is the eagle arms, right? Where you wrap one elbow on top of the other and then wrap the forearms. So when you do that, you draw the shoulder blades back into the back. So this is just sort of a step one of that sort of notion. So I'm pulling across and pulling my shoulder blade back with about equal measure so that there's a little bit of a... Um, little bit of a struggle to get that shoulder blade back in place and this creates a kind of isometric release of that uh, shoulder and all the muscles involved in stabilizing the shoulder blade so we'll take two more breaths and then 
I'm just gonna let that arm go for a moment. And then for me, I'd like to, again, just put my arms down for a second and see if there's a difference that I notice. And is the difference pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? Now, in my case, that, that thing that I was noticing has now disappeared. My right shoulder blade is now laying much more level on the floor. I don't feel the tip of my shoulder blade poking into the ground like I did before. So there's a little sense of sort of broadness across the chest and a much more even feeling in the shoulder. So that may or may not be true for you. Just notice what is true. So I'm going to do the other side because it's, that's, I call that a pleasant outcome. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to do that exactly the same way. And if for you it was like a little less than pleasant, try a slightly different angle with your arm or a slightly different amount of pressure. So I'm pulling my left shoulder blade down and I'm kind of resisting that with my right hand. And this for me is one of the best, like it's so simple, but it's one of the best ways to sort of re-stabilize my shoulders after I've been sleeping all night. I just like to sleep curled up in a ball. And this is like a nice little morning thing to do to kind of re-stabilize my shoulders <laughs> before I start loading them with stress for the day. <sighs> or, you know, working on a computer or something. So we're gonna take another deep breath, maybe two more, I like two. And then I'm gonna release that arm and again, just kind of check in and see how that went. And so, yeah, that's a pleasant outcome for me. All right, see what's true for you. And then you can start to kind of play with other ways of releasing your shoulders. Maybe you want more of that eagle arm or something along that line. All right, so now we're gonna take uh, the legs and just float them up so that it feels like your knees kind of balance over the top of the pelvis and we'll give ourselves a little kind of back and forth. Just make sure there's no tenderness in your low back. You're going to try to stabilize your shoulders and kind of press them down to the ground and as you bring the legs over to the right you can decide whether you're going to just curl the knees towards the armpit, whether you're going to straighten one leg or both legs out. Okay? trying to hold the shoulder blades as best we can level on the ground. You come to the middle, we're just going to use the abdominals to flex the spine and curl the knees in, come into the left, same idea. Okay, so just going back and forth. Every time we come to the center, we do that extra little bit of curl. I'm working in a small space, so I'm just working with the curled up knees. But every time I return to that position where my knees are kind of just below my belly button, right? So that gives me the room to do the little oh, curl. All right, do two more sets. Now, for some reason, this <laughs> movement pattern makes me travel down my mat. So before I do this next thing, which is to grab hold of my right leg, I'm going to just slide myself back up here. <laughs> okay, then once you're in place, <laughs> grab hold of your right leg, stretch your left leg out, let that rest. We're going to spin that right foot in circles. And then go the opposite direction. Point and flex. All right, so then we'll take ourselves and try straightening the leg out. You can let go of your leg if you like. Um, <laughs> if, if holding on to it and straightening it out is really tricky. You can certainly let go and press up through the heel. So we're going to try to get a little bit longer through the calf muscles if possible. And then one more of those. Now we're going to leave the legs straight up. You can push up through the heel, up through the ball of the foot or point your toe. 
Then on the other side, we're gonna turn the left toes straight up in the air. You're gonna kind of dig in a little bit with your heel. Draw the sides of your waist in nice and firm and getting those shoulder blades nicely snuggled in, pressing the arms into the floor. That's the work of the lower body. So we're gonna take the leg across and as we draw a big circle, all of this work that we're doing should hold that torso nice and stable. So the leg is making resistance happen and we're whoo, holding it in. Get two more of those. And when you get to the top, we're gonna pause there and go out to the side first, sweep it down so the legs come together and then come up the, back up to the top. Nice controlled movement. Two more, really hold and steady through that body. When you get to the top, we're going to bend that right knee. Now you can bring your hands behind your head and um, so that you'll, you'll keep your neck nice and stable, or you can reach forward with your arms. If that's not an issue for you, we're going to float that left leg up and we're going to stretching through that left leg, curl up a little bit towards that right leg, stretch through the right leg, curl up towards the left. It's not a twist, but we're just curling in. All right, carry on you. Stretching through the leg, adding that little extra bit of ab work there. Resisting using your neck. Two more. Now we'll let ourselves rest. Rest your right leg. Oh, I'm gonna give mine a little stretch first. <laughs> and then release, and then spin your left foot in circles. And oh, other direction. <laughs> and then point and flex when you're ready. So then we'll start with the little hamstring stretches, just giving that leg a little straightening out. Maybe it doesn't straighten all the way. Maybe you let go of it so you can. I'm noticing just a little bit of tightness in an area of my calf I don't normally feel. So that's the deal. We're just tuning in with everything we do to see if we feel anything new or different or <laughs> okay so i'm going to re-angle myself but we're going to do the same activity here with this left leg as the right so the right leg is going to come in so i've turned the toes up got a slight bend in my knee i'm really anchoring my right leg to the ground i'm hugging in through the sides of my waist shoulders nice and steady bring in that left leg across and then draw in a circle, trying to hold the torso nice and stable through this motion. So about half of the work we do with Pilates, maybe two thirds, <laughs> is all about abdominal stabilizing. Oh. One more of those. When you get to the top, we're going out to the side, coming down, coming straight up. Hold and steady through that side waist as best you can. Oh, two more of those. All right. When you finish, we're gonna bring both knees in. And again, this is a stabilizing exercise. So we're curling into a ball. Again, the neck will often try to do some of the work of lifting and we wanna prevent that. So I like to keep my hands behind my head, extend my arms and bring them back. But we're trying to use the abdominals to curl or flex the spine. And then we're gonna try to hold that curl even the whole time. So we'll extend either the arms and the legs or just the legs. And the angle that you bring your legs to will challenge you more or less to remain stable. So choose a challenging angle for yourself. 
let's do three more. Excellent. Now bringing the legs back down, and we're just gonna unwind any tension that we might discover in the abdominals or in the legs or in the hip flexors. Just let yourself relax for a moment. One of the things I find most interesting is unwinding <laughs> all of that once you've gotten really good at putting it in place. All right, so give yourself a nice long stretch. And we're gonna do the roll up. Now you can, if you can roll up smoothly, all the way to sitting and all the way back down, fantastic. But there's a lot of folks for a variety of reasons, flexibility in the spine, strength in the abdominals, angles of like longer legs, shorter torso, longer torso, shorter legs, all kinds of, of varieties of reasons that people can't roll up smooth. So if you're like that, <laughs> do what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do it in two halves. So what we wanna do is curl up as far as we can get up off the floor. So I'm gonna put my hands behind my head so I can push my head back. But you can just as easily reach forward, okay? So we're gonna curl up and come back down. Keep the head pressing back so we're not overdoing things with the neck. Curl up, see how high you can curl off the floor. And again, this is just, we're still working all the same muscles we're just working them in slightly smaller arrangement. One more of those. Now we're gonna come all the way up to sitting. So we'll roll ourselves up. And normally what you'll do then is we're gonna try to go backwards, but let's start with a nice tall spine, fold forward. Okay, so that's as far as your hips will let you go. Then we're gonna come back and this is where we'll coil in and see how far we can roll down before the legs start to lift off the ground or you lose a little bit of control. Then you sit up tall, fold forward from the hip, come back, pull that navel in, roll down. Either way, we're doing all the same movements and we're avoiding that kind of thrusting forward or pushing up with the hands and really trying to make the abdominals do their job. <laughs> and the hip flexors and everything helping out. All right, let's do two more of those. And if you're rolling up, that might be one roll up for you. <laughs> and then you're gonna stay seated. All right, yogis. So I'm gonna turn sideways. This may not be something you have to do. <laughs> you might be angled exactly right. Uh, so we're gonna take the legs into this V position. I don't think I caught all of that. Okay, so just a little wider than an average yoga mat. But if that feels like it's causing your pelvis to lean backwards, then you have two options. You can sit up on the edge of something or you can bend your knees and put a little something underneath or a pillow or so underneath each knee. Just to give you that upright pelvis, that's what we're going for. <laughs> so the spine is nice and tall. Taking the arms out, we're gonna turn, and then from the hip, we're gonna fold forward towards the leg. One, two, maybe a little third pulse. Then coming up, getting nice and tall in the center, turn, saw in, two, three. Lift, turn, saw, two, three, lift, turn, saw, two, three. And we're just gonna keep going just like that. Looking towards the back hand. Every time we come, we get a little taller. Every time we come forward, we're working from the hip and not from the low back, right? We keep that spine nice and tall. One, two, three. Doesn't matter if you actually get anywhere near your foot. One, two, three. If the little pulses cause trouble for your hamstrings, don't pulse, just hold. Oh. All right, we're gonna do one more set. Nice and tall. Nice and tall. All right, lean back just a little bit, bring, bring your feet in. So we're gonna start with a simple cross-legged position 
and see how that goes. We're going to try to bring the thighs in fairly close together so that there's as close to the midline as you can get. So that's option number one. Option number two is to either bring the shins up on top of each other or you can substitute in a yoga prop like let's say a yoga block that's what I like to do and just let the legs slightly hang out in the front but again we're bringing the thighs in nice and tight and then the last option is to bring your knees on top of each other and for me that one either requires that I elevate my hips <laughs> or choose a different option okay so we've got this set up if there's some extra space underneath and you want to, you can fill it in so that there's a little more structure. Okay, so I put my left leg on top. That means I'm turning to the left first. If your right leg is in front, you'll turn to your right first. Sitting up nice and tall, we're going to rotate the spine in this pose. And I'm holding on just a little bit to my ankle in the front, but you can bring your arm all the way around your knee or bring your elbow over the knee if you have your knees stacked on top of each other. <clears throat> and I'm just reminding myself to sit up a little taller. Settling my shoulder blades a little bit, taking one more breath here. And then we're gonna come around the front. Now, it's possible that leaning back is gonna be the right position because you're already feeling a lot of pressure in this outer hip you don't need anymore. It's possible staying straight up is gonna work the best. It's possible that you'll be able to lean forward and clearly there's a point where you'll stop. Either your chest will touch your thighs or your elbows will touch the floor and there will be no more room. <laughs> so if there's space and you wanna take it up, you're welcome to fold forward. But if you already feel something in this outer hip area, maybe on both sides, maybe only on the one top leg side. You're there, just pause. So we're gonna do three more breaths. Okay, so I'm going to inhale my way up, lean back a little bit, unwind the legs. And before I go anywhere else, I'm just going to pause for a moment and rinse everything out. I'm not going anywhere right away. Because oh, I want to let the sense that this hip has just kind of soften a little bit. Before I take it the opposite direction. All right, so again, for me, the cross-legged forward, uh, the cross-legged position with my left leg forward is the comfortable position. So as soon as I get into place with my right leg in front, I'm already on notice a little bit. So you may find that to be true too. So the second side, you might do a slightly different variation on the pose. You decide based on how it feels. So I'm going to bring my leg into this position with a little block up front, just so I have that little extra support. And then sitting up nice and tall, I'm twisting to my right. And again, I'm not forcing anything here. I'm trying to keep this thigh as close to the midline as I can. And again, everybody's body's a little different. You might have that opportunity to wrap your elbow around or wrap your arm around really easily. For me, that's a bit of a far reach. <laughs> so just reminding myself to sit up tall, hang out with the twist for a few more breaths. Okay, taking one more breath here. And then with my exhale, I'm coming around. And again, just noticing, like, do, do I feel anything sitting straight up? If it's in too intense, you lean back. If it feels okay, but you don't really notice a lot of sensation, then you can start to lean a little bit forward. Or a lot, as the case may be.
So we're gonna stay for about three more breaths. I like to just notice, like, is can I feel like the tension from my hip? Where do I feel that? Does it go up my back? Does it come down my leg? Is it all of the above? <laughs> I'm just paying attention to how, like, even a tiny nuance of, of movement sort of impacts my experience here. Taking one more breath, coming up, leaning back, and unwinding the legs. So again, one more time, just giving myself a chance, and I'll, I'll suggest the same for you. Let's just give yourself a chance to kind of rinse that out. Now, what we're going to do next is come to a downward facing dog. If <laughs> you are feeling super um, like energetic this morning, you could, instead of doing just downward dog and some movement there, you could throw in a few sun salutations uh, <laughs> in place of a holding of the dog. I'm going to hold the dog and walk up and down and stuff, but that's up to you. Okay. So once you are feeling like you're ready for that, <laughs> you can either follow along here and do the oh, kind of exploratory movement that Downward Dog offers, or throw in some sun salutations, get yourself all jazzed up. Oh. Now, at some point, we're all going to wind up at the top of our mat, but if you're doing sun salutations, you can do a few more of those. I've come to a little forward bend here, and I'm kind of coming over to the left, and then over to the right. I'm going to do that a couple times. <laughs> you can also just dangle if that's your jam. And then I'm gonna come all the way to standing. Ooh. And you guys will just meet me up at the top of the mat when you're ready, whatever you determine is the top of your mat. So whatever side that is, <laughs> meet, me, meet me there in a moment. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna do a little flowing sequence that's gonna have um, a revolved half moon and a half moon balance uh, included in the top of it. So if you feel like a good idea would be to have a yoga block handy, put one of those up at the top of your mat. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> and then find your mountain pose. <clears throat> and let's take the first measure of mountain. Let's see how it feels this morning. So when you're ready, we're going to take a nice big breath, reach the arms overhead, get a nice long stretch, fold forward, come up halfway. Now your left hand is going to extend down. So you can either touch the floor or put your block underneath that left hand. We're going to put all the weight in the left leg, pick the right leg up, and stretch it back. Ooh. All right, so then we're going to tip the hip up and <laughs> theoretically, Turn that into a half moon balance. <clears throat> now we're going to try to step that half moon balance back to warrior two. <laughs> when you get your warrior two settled in, come on back for reverse warrior. Over for a side angle. Back to reverse. Over for a side angle. Oh. Back to reverse. Oh. Over for a side angle. We're using the abdominals to stretch. So as I come back, I'm actively reaching myself into that reverse shape. And then as I come over, actively stretching out along that side angle shape. Now we're going to straighten out the front leg. And you can do a little reverse triangle or not. <laughs> and then come into your triangle pose. And that's however you want your triangle pose to be. You can have an extended arm, a hand on your hip, a bound arm, as you like. <clears throat> One more breath here. And then you're going to put both hands down. Now, you're either going to take 
<clears throat> yourself up to the top of the mat and wait in a forward bend. Back to downward dog and wait there or throw in a sun salutation. So from downward dog, you can come forward, add on or take away from your plank as you like. Come into your back bend, come back to that dog. We're gonna take the right leg up, sink it into that left heel, bring your right knee up towards your right elbow if you can. Stretch it back towards the elbow, stretch it back. And then we're gonna join our friends who stepped up to the top of the mat <laughs> and held that forward bend. Come up halfway all the way to stand and give yourself a big stretch. Oh. Find that mountain pose once again. Notice if there's a difference. <laughs> nice big inhale, reaching up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Right hand comes to the block or the floor, whatever you're using. Leaning into your right leg, pick your left leg up. And then we're gonna try to tilt the hip up. And if we can, expand out into that half moon balance. Ooh. <laughs> Might get wobbly <laughs> or very wobbly. <laughs> Last breath here. And then we'll try to turn that into a warrior two. Oh. Once you get there, a little reverse. <laughs> oh, side angle. Use the obliques and the other abdominals to really stretch into that shape. Oh. So we're not just moving, but we're reaching. Oh. Two more. <laughs> this may feel so nice. Oh. Oh. All right, so then we'll straighten out the front leg. And I need a little less space for my triangle <laughs> than I need for my warrior two. And then choose your triangle angle. <laughs> you might want a little less or a little more rotation, a little less or a little more hip action. And then breathe. One more breath. And then again, you can do any of those three movements. Step up to the top, step back to dog, step back and put in a sun salutation. Your choice. Oh, oh and then that left leg <laughs> is gonna come up. We're gonna bring it oh, towards that left elbow reach it back left elbow reach it back and we'll come up to the top of our mat and join up our friends coming up halfway <laughs> oh. and then all the way up to standing nice big stretch oh. and finding our moment here oh. our mountain pose Testing it out. How's it feel? All right, yogis. So we're gonna take a nice big breath. Reach the arms up, grab your right wrist, give it a little stretch over to the left. Coming back to the center, folding forward. We're gonna put the right hand on the floor and take the left leg up. So weight in that left leg, right leg, oops, switch hands, left hand on the floor, <laughs> left leg in the air. So keeping the pelvis nice and level, we're going to rotate to our right and stretch up into that revolved half moon. Oh, reaching through. One last breath. Now we're going to try to step this into warrior one. 
So I'm gonna come down, still aiming my chest forward, find my position with my feet. And then if it doesn't feel like you're in the right position, by all means, switch it up. We'll bring the arms up, pull the elbows back, push forward. Trying to keep that nice range of motion in the shoulders. Now as you push forward, we're gonna wrap the arms around behind. Now you can lace your fingers together, grab a wrist, put one palm on top of the other. Ooh. And then we're gonna fold. So you can fold more towards the leg or more towards that diagonal. The arms can float up, press the feet into the mat and stretch the mat between your feet. Let your upper body relax if you can. <laughs> and draw the shoulders towards each other, the shoulder blades. whatever version you're up to here. One more breath, we're gonna release the arms. Now, we're gonna turn ourselves towards the long edge of the mat. So I'm bringing my right foot and turning it about 90 degrees, and then adjusting my left foot. So I'm in a wide angle forward bend down the center line of my mat. Release your arms. Now you can reach your hands through, you can grab your big toes, put them in a little headlock, <laughs> a little toe lock, and take your elbows out, or it might feel nice to reach the arms up in front. So it's almost like a downward dog with the upper body, but no weight there, all the weight is in the legs. A nice sort of release through the upper body. Two more breaths, yogis. All right, now we're gonna come backwards essentially. So we're gonna turn ourselves around towards the back of the mat. So I've got my left foot pivoting all the way around and my right foot aiming itself towards that warrior one shape. I'm gonna bring my arms up and around and grab the opposite hand. If you lace your fingers together, lace them together with a different thumb or a different finger on top and then let yourself fold into this humble warrior going the back way. Oh. And again, I'm drawing my shoulder blades towards each other here. Oh. <laughs> One more breath. Oh, we're gonna release the arms. I'm gonna slowly bring myself up to warrior one. Bringing the arms up, pulling the elbows back. Oh, pushing forward, arms up, elbows back. Push forward, arms up, elbows back. Now, to transition right into my revolved half moon, I'm gonna creep my right foot in a little so that as I put my right hand on the ground, to create that twist. I'm already sort of halfway there. <laughs> and then we'll turn the ribs oh, towards that left side and reach into it. Big long stretch. Oh, and then bring that uh, right leg back to the ground. We're gonna come up halfway fold, come all the way up to standing. Give yourself a big stretch, grab that left wrist, give it a little stretch over to the right, come back to the center, and then when you're ready, take your mountain pose. And just feel it. <laughs> See what it feels like. Oh. All right, yogis, essentially what we're gonna do is sit down and go right into a boat pose. <laughs> I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, so <laughs> we'll figure it out together. <laughs> so I'm gonna squat down as far as I can squat, and that's gonna be the opening <laughs> of what I'm gonna do. Oh. I'm gonna hold that for a couple more breaths because I feel like I need it. <laughs> 
and then some people will be able to just sit straight down and go right into their boat. I'm gonna need a little extra step <laughs> so we can find a boat pose. Oh, if you wanna turn this into a teaser, you can. Otherwise, you can join me for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> and then if you're teasering, then the next time you are, you know, when you feel like you're in the moment and ready to do so, you can just land on your back oh, and stay there for a moment. <laughs> We're going to give it a big stretch. Oh. Now, my right arm is going to stay up and I'm going to roll onto my right side. So I've got my hips stacked on top, shoulders stacked on top as square as I can make <laughs> my not very square body. I'm going to hug in through the sides of my waist, hug the navel back a little bit, try to maintain the structure so that there's no wobbling in my torso, right? The arm can go up for very little help at all. <laughs> I find putting it on my hip a nice medium because I can feel if my hip is moving and it's a little bit less uh, resistance. And then I can put my arm up front if there's really movements that are really hard for me to maintain the balance of. So we're gonna take the toes and turn them out. We're gonna lift the top leg and then we're gonna circle that leg in a way that makes it hard to hold this steady, right? So I want that challenge, but I don't want the circle to be so big that I cannot maintain control here. So we're finding that middle space. Three, two, one. Circle in the opposite direction. And I do find one direction a little easier to hold steady than the other. Oh. And we've got five, four, three, two, one. Bringing the legs together, we're going to turn this top leg internally, so from the thigh bone, and then the toes will kind of point at an angle. Now, it is not important that you touch the ground here, um, but it, you, it's an option. <laughs> so we're going to swing the leg forward and back, and it's possible that you'll be able to touch the toe to the ground, but if it feels like the ground is just too far away, don't bother. Now, the further forward and back I sw swing my leg, the more challenged I am to maintain that stable balance, right? So choose an appropriate distance so that you're able to challenge your abdominal core strength oh, to hold stable. We got three more to go. And try to maintain that internal rotation if you can. It's a difficult position often to hold. Now, when we get to the bottom of that, we're going to bring the heels in. So the feet are up, knees are down. We'll do this little movement open. You can just hover there or you can extend the leg, bring the toes together, bring the knees together. Okay. So hold and steady through the core <laughs> and work in this outer hip. We've done a lot of work for this outer hip. Three more. All right, last one for me. <laughs> now we'll let the legs extend. I'm gonna take this left leg that's up on top, put it over the top, lift the right leg off the bottom. Now you can straighten this leg out if you like. I sort of like this semi-pigeon. <laughs> so we'll pulse this bottom leg up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold it steady there and make a circle or a little figure eight for five, four, three, two, one. Opposite circle or opposite eight for five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to the center, release that leg. Now, just for a moment, we're going to let ourselves roll into a twist. I'm bending both of my knees. Bring in my shoulder to the ground. If I've got a little more room, you could wrap your legs around each other. If you have a little less, you could throw in a prop. 
And try to let yourself whoo, really let go into the twist. Like relax, 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 relax. Every muscle. <laughs> Sometimes I have to mentally <laughs> and like with my exhales convince my body it's cool to relax. It's been holding on this whole time. <laughs> yogis. I'm going to take one more breath here and then I'm going to flip around to do the opposite side. Oh, now I'm going to spin 180 degrees, but you could, of course, oh, just roll over if you're down with that. Okay. So, getting everything aligned again. <laughs> Picking up my top leg and hug it in the sides of the waist so I can make a little circle there. Again, whatever size circle is going to challenge you to stay steady. Five, four, three, two, one. Circle the opposite direction. Hugging in nice and tight. Five, four, three, two, one, and then we'll come back to the internal rotation. <laughs> Just setting that up has changed the relationship I'm having with my back right now. Coming forward and back. Oh. Oh. Let's do four more. Three. Two and one. Trying to maintain that stability. We'll bring the feet in, lift them, add the little butterfly or the clam kick. Four more. To maintain that nice stability, hold that leg steady. Last one. All right. So we'll stretch the legs out, bring that top leg into whatever position is appropriate for you. Lift the leg that's on the bottom, in my case now, the left leg, and then we're going to pulse it up for 10, 9, 8, 7. I'm trying to work deep in my belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Making a circle or a figure eight up at the top there for five, four, three, two, one. Switch in the direction for five, four, three, two, one. Hold and steady. Bringing that leg down and then we're gonna come into that twist. I'm gonna get a pillow <laughs> because I'm gonna want it for my shavasana. <laughs> oh, so oh. this might be the point after you kind of hold this twist that you head off to work. <clears throat> and I want you to know that I appreciate that you came <laughs> and thank you for joining us if you're one of those folks I'm not gonna be able to say goodbye to later. Namaste, you guys. <clears throat> I'm trying to let oh, every muscle relax, taking two more breaths here. And then we'll just transition into Shavasana for those of us that are hanging out. Oh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna bring my legs back. And before I put this pillow underneath my legs, I'm just gonna do a little oh, back and forth. Now this is one of my favorites. You could also bring your knees in, give yourself a little hug. It's good to hug your favorite yogi every day. <laughs> uh, I'll save that for the end. <laughs> oh. And then let yourself settle into a relatively relaxed position. So if you have a couch nearby or a bed or something, you can put your legs up on it. And so your, your shins will kind of, your calf muscles will rest on the seat. Or if the bed or the wall, you can put your legs straight up. And that's a nice way to get a little inversion in in your final relaxation. 
if none of that sounds like a good idea, <laughs> you can just lie down. Make yourself comfortable. I always like the pillow under my legs. It helps my hip flexors completely relax. And so my low back is very, very happy. Oh. And I like checking in too to see, does my body feel different now than it did when I first hit this mat this morning? <laughs> it feels like that was a long time ago. Just noticing how movement feels in the body, how the tissue responds to movement. Like I usually feel a little tingly and more alive. And then ultimately just letting yourself completely unwind into this pose you've chosen. And again, one of the ways that we can help kind of keep our nervous system calm is just to let those exhales come out completely free and easy, no tension, lots of gentle kindness towards ourselves as we exhale. Now, yogis, just notice your breath again. And just see, like, how deep into the body can you feel your breath moving? <laughs> Next time you take a big inhale, see if you can take that inhale all the way down to your tiptoes. Let go with a sigh. <sighs> then you can wiggle and stretch and move around. And you're ready. <laughs> We're gonna come back to a seated position. Oh. And thank you for joining me and to those of you that hung out till the end. <laughs> Let's take a breath together and a big sigh. 
Namaste, beautiful souls.